Welcome back to this special edition of Free Speech Nation with me, Andrew Doyle. Today we're talking about WPATH, the World Professional Association for Transgender Health, and the leaked files that raise concerns about their policies and global influence. Alba Party MP Neil Hanvey uh, has been raising concerns in Parliament about the risks to young gay people that come from gender-affirming care, but this has often fallen on uh, death ears, unfortunately. I'm going to be speaking to Neil in a moment, but before I, I get to, the, to Neil, I, I want to talk to someone who has had direct experience of such treatment. Now, Richie Heron has been kind enough to join us. Uh, he's down the line. Richie, can you hear me? Just having slight technical difficulties. We'll see if we can get him now. Hi, Richie. Are you there? Yes. Hi, Andrew. Thanks very much for having me on. And Richie, uh, I just um, want to say a big thank you to Neil for um, advocating for us in Parliament. Uh, we do take notice and we greatly appreciate that. Thank you, Neil. Absolutely, Richie. Now, t tell us about your experience. What happened with you? Um, I transitioned at the age of 26, but because of the 2012-13 interim NHS protocols, which were backed by the WPATH guidelines, um, I was able to use a privately paid assessment to start a testosterone blocker before I'd even been seen by the gender clinic. Um, and then I was assessed there and it was a affirmation only route, which I would like to say is being challenged uh, in a high court decision uh, on the 26th of this month um, by the case run by Anna Castle and uh, the other parent. And the reason for that is I'm not sure if a lot of people realize that although the ch children's services uh, may not be used in the WPATH guidelines, when as soon as they turn 16 or slash 17, they are instantly being referred to, to the adult specs uh, services, which do use those guidelines, which hopefully um, will be challenged at the and end of this that, month. That's a very important point, Richie, isn't it? Because you were a little older, you were 26. There are some people who go through yeah. this much, much younger. But of course, as the WPATH files show, this isn't just about children. It's about vulnerable adults as, as well. And you would, fall, you would have fallen into, into that category. Now, oh, yeah. a, a lot of the files seem to be quite uh, dismissive uh, of, of concerns of detransitioners. There's um, for instance, there's one um, clinician in the WPATH files that says, yes, regret, it's there. And I don't think that surprises us. So they're fully aware. Can I give another couple of examples? There's this document from the WPATH files. A clinician is saying, if an individual patient feels they made a mistake, be careful with that, not letting uh, us change the way that others, others receive care. Here you've got another doctor saying, patients need to own and take active responsibility for medical decisions especially those that have potentially permanent effects. Richie, what do you think about that? Well, to that I would say, f*** WPATH. Um, I'm sorry for swearing. But well, I, quite I would just quickly really. apologise to anyone watching who was offended by the language. But Richie, I completely understand the strength of emotion here, so yeah. please do continue. Um, well, to be honest, the way detransitioners are treated, not only by the professional, the medical community, but the trans community is really disgusting. We are forgotten about, we're not even counted. In fact, if I was to go back to the gender clinic, um, which I am very reluctant to do so, um, I would be counted as another successful transition. My detransition is not counted because it would be then marked from female back to male. Absolutely astonishing stuff. Richie, thanks so much for telling us uh, what happened to you. I really appreciate that. I'd uh, just like to reiterate to anyone at home who was offended by the language, we apologise for, for the use of that language. Uh, but obviously, Neil, um, Richie is very upset, rightly so, and it's going to come out that way. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, and I, I think, you know, there, there has to be a certain level of understanding that we're talking about um, malpra medical malpractice on a scale that I have never witnessed in my life before my backgrounds in healthcare and some of the stories that have been set out by WPATH really chill me to the core. And that, we're seeing how they're influencing the UK. That's, yes, that's I, the dangerous thing here for us. It's the, there's almost, it's like everything with queer theory. The standards, the principles, everything's inverted, everything's turned upside down. Yes. And so, uh, I, I, and that is exactly what we're looking at here. The type of practice that's been described in the, the WPATH files uh, is absolute anathema. 
to everything that I witnessed but, in my professional career. But, Neil, I, I just get the impression that people in Parliament, and I'm not, I'm not I'm speaking generally here, yeah. that, that they're not interested. You know, I mean, we have now um, uh, various people on, the, on Labour in, in the Conservatives, Alicia Kearns, for instance, yeah. who had a go at you in Parliament. They're supporting a ban on what they call trans-conversion therapy. What they're effectively doing is, is opposing the, thero, uh, the, the psychotherapeutic approach to dealing with people's yeah. problems like Richie experienced. yes. yes. And what they are effectively... Sorry, I'll let you speak about yeah. that. Well, I mean, you're, you're entirely correct. I mean, it is, it is a trans-conversion therapy ban is the green light for gay conversion therapy to trans away the gay, to consign young, gender non-conforming young people to a lifetime of medical and surgical interventions uh, and promises uh, that can never be realised. These are completely unrealistic... Uh, expectations these young people are being sold, they're being lied to, uh, and there's a fundamental absence of consent. And uh, when I, you talk about the behaviours of certain a MPs and the like, look, we've got th th this scandal uh, is a, has a medical component uh, with medical practice that would never be tolerated in any other field of medicine. I'm absolutely clear about that. We have uh, a societal challenge where our norms and culture are being uh, infiltrated by a dangerous ideology. This is not about trans people. This is uh, the insinuation of queer theory into every institution. And we have another scandal, which is the silence of the media, the lack of reporting into one of the greatest medical scandals we have ever witnessed uh, in a way that would never have happened on anything else. I mean, if you look at... Older Hay, Bristol, the mesh scandal, uh, and many, many other uh, medical scandals, or indeed safeguarding scandals like Baby P and Victoria Columbia. The media were all over them, but we have people like Richie and Kira uh, and many, many uh, others, um, uh, like Sinead Watson, for example, who's not necessarily a gender non conforming person, but found her route into this yes. situation in a very different way. These are detransitioners that you're mentioning. Th that's right. Yeah. They're all being ignored. Now, I'm surprised by that. the scandal is being ignored. I mean, I, I, you know, I hate to say it, but I, I believe that GB News is the only news channel that has covered this at all. Yes. Many, many national newspapers have just completely left this alone. Yes. It has echoes, in a way, of the grooming gang scandal, where there was this, uh, you know, rape and sexual assault on a mass scale. Yes. And uh, everyone, including the police, were saying just... Just don't go near it, yes. don't touch it. Now, that, that's what's happening here, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely, 100%. And, uh, you know, there are no good answers uh, as to why that's happening. Now, I, I know from my experience in my political party uh, that because I put my hand up and spoke out about this in 2019, yes. I was targeted and bullied. And I know that people are very frightened uh, of that. And a lot of people don't really understand what's at play here. They don't understand what queer theory is about. And so there's, there's uh, misinformation, disinformation and fear seem to be the tools and well, weapons can I that are keeping people silent. Well, I can ask you, because I, I, I notice a lot of people say that you're being bigoted, you're being transphobic, you're being hateful. This is the thing that the likes of Alicia Kearns are saying. I should also say I've invited Alicia Kearns onto this show, hopefully for next week. I really hope she can come, because I'd love to have this conversation with her, because I think there must be a misunderstanding. I think people like Alicia Kearns simply don't understand the issues. No. They assume it's hate, bigotry, it's yes. the opposite of that. Well, I think Alicia uh, uh, demonstrated exactly that counterpoint and that inversion of reality. Yes. She stood up, had a homophobic rant, a gay man, felt justified as a heterosexual woman to do that and didn't see the dissonance in her position. But do you not think that if she realised that if, her, if she got her way, if that policy went through, she would be green-lighting gay conversion therapy? Oh, do you think if she realised that, she wouldn't support it? I, I think if she was prepared to listen for long enough to really understand the problem, she might get there. But I fear she is, like so many others, frightened to actually listen to the argument. OK, well, Neil Hanvey, I really appreciate you coming on. Thanks for joining Good us tonight. Well.